I recently had a discussion with a very intelligent person which made me realize the many misconceptions caused by misinformation that intelligent people have. The discussion came to the topic of global warming. This person did not believe in global warming as there were temperature variations in the past and the person also believed that the scientists had some overarching agenda to uphold such as the ability to gain funding for research that they were lying about the entire issue. This person seriously thought that it was a conspiracy to give the government more power and control our lives. Just to give you some background, this person traveled a lot and listened to a lot of conservative radio. However, many liberals also don't seem to understand why we find global warming to be highly probable. I had to respond and explain to the person just how the scientific community works. However, due to the fact that most people don't actually understand how the scientific process works, and the scientific community is pretty bad at explaining itself, this misunderstanding and mystery is rampant. First, I had to break down for the person why the temperature fluctuation idea was not a legitimate argument against global warming. If any paper came out with an argument that the average layperson could poke a hole through, that scientist's degree would be considered worthless. The idea of a layperson finding a flaw in a scientist theory makes for a good story in a movie, but the chances are ridiculously low without years of formal education in that field. First off, any argument devised by a layperson has already been taken into account. That is actually the first thing a scientist would have had to take into account in a scientific paper. A scientist has to write his paper attempting to make it bulletproof from scrutiny just to make it past the subcommittee of scientists in his or her field, much less the peer review. Any layman's argument would have been taken into account before the idea of the hypothesis ever set pen to paper. Therefore, every single evidence of temperature fluctuation would have had to have been taken into account. A scientist cannot go around shouting the sky is falling without having all the data point toward the fact. If they didn't have this, they would be on the same level of academic respect as a person who believes that 2012 is the end of the world. Also, laypersons spend at best three weeks to six months worth of study on a topic, if that, and a scientist spends four, eight, or more years laboriously studying the topic with little pay compared to a doctor, CEO, or lawyer. On top of this, scientists love to jump all over someone else's paper and disagree if they find anything that goes against the facts and evidence. Scientists are quite vicious when they see any error that is presented in a paper. The reasons why are for one, their egos and reputation, and two, because they don't want any falsehoods in the scientific community. If and only if the idea makes it through this brutal process of scrutiny by the majority of the scientific community, who each spent probably decades on the subject, then and only then will the idea be considered probable. Sadly, creationists use these same arguments against evolution, and they use data and concepts taken into account by scientists way before the idea ever even came up. By the time a creationist comes up with an argument against evolution, the scientists seem to have already answered it about 50 years ago, such as the case of the Piltdown Man, Carbon-14 Dating, and the evolution of the eye and flagella. Also, they and the global warming skeptics seem to think that there is some lurking conspiracy to propagate these claims and hide the truth. Fear of conspiracy is actually pretty common, especially when trying to maintain the us versus them xenophobic mindset. The reasons why there is no scientific conspiracy is that if a scientist could find a linchpin in global warming or evolutionary theory that destroyed it, that person would get a Nobel Prize. However, no facts found have contradicted either theory. Scientists get paid relatively little and do not need to make things up like global warming and evolution as they could be using that time and money to study something else. In fact, most scientists probably have ideas they would like to study and work on if for some reason their field wasn't so important or interesting. If global warming was suddenly found to be false, every scientist around the world would probably cheer, as at this point it would require new data or a better climate model that fit all previously known data to disprove climate change. These scientists would then go on to study other things like better ways to predict the weather so our weather reports could actually be accurate. Nothing a layperson could come up with 
could destroy the model of climate change. They don't have the data or the knowledge to do so. If climate change and evolution were a conspiracy, other scientists would speak out against it as that money could be going to fund their research if the study was fraudulent and hard to find grant money would have been wasted. Grant money is difficult to come by in academia. The Nobel Prize is only one million, but that could pay a month or even a week's worth of research in some fields. Scientists are not paid enough to lie. Oil spokesmen and talk radio hosts like Rush Limbaugh, however, are. I hate to say it, but I have to believe that climate change is man-made because I understand the system and I know that my lay arguments have already been taken into account long before I even knew about the problem. Sadly, high-paid energy suppliers and talk radio hosts are paid giant sums of money to spin the facts to make it appear as if the relatively low-paid scientific community are doing the things that these well-paid individuals are actually doing. The only difference is, is these people have no expertise and no one to regulate what they are saying, like the scientific community does. Sadly, since a corporation was given rights of an individual, including the right to lie, these companies can say whatever they want and appear to be just as legitimate to a layperson as that of a scientist.